I had been invited to Headingham Castle in Essex. And what a day to arrive. The weather was amazing, I think you'll agree. This was Britain, so it meant that they cancelled all the trains. To make it look more medieval, they had loads of strange tall braziers heating up bits of air above head height with bright smokeless flames, fueled of course from pressurised gas containers. Damn, that's medieval! Inside, the theme continued with racks of exotic iron killmongery and images of crown sporting armoured men, absolutely none of whom looked in any way pleased to see us. An eerie blue glowing screen portended a talk from the pulpit about a new computer game. For this was the launch of one such, Thrones of Britannia, set in AD 878, just after the Battle of Eddington, at which the great heathen army was defeated by Alfie the Great. I rubbed shoulders with members of the world's press because, it seems, I am now an influencer. So, beware of me, in case I'm bad. Ooh, I like that art. Later, there would be a banquet, but not yet. My armor's going to be more authentic than that. 9th century, 15th, it's all medieval, isn't it? Yeah, the pose on that guy is quite interesting. Wow. <laughs> there is so much wrong with that, it's wonderful. Oh, where's some rotten cabbage when you need some? Oh, catering isn't here yet, thank God. I signed the embargo, agreeing not to publish before the public launch date, and then I was let loose on the many computers. Beneath the largest surviving Norman arch in Britain, they had arrayed for us many fancy computers for trying out the game. Alas, the beautiful weather had kept quite a few people away, so there were several empty seats. This is what they think the castle used to look like, with an outer curtain wall and a separate lower bailey on another mound for the less important but still worth defending stuff. Hushed and hunched in the dim light, we battled imagined foes. Bloody sexes. So how's it going so far, Mighty? Not bad. What's your job description with regard to this? I am Jack Lusted. I'm the game director, which means I am at the top of the tree in terms of the development team, so I make all the big choices. All oh, right. So what was, what was the biggest choice you made, other than you, know, to, to tackle this theme? Probably limiting it to Britain and Ireland. Because right. you've got Vikings in the game, people go, oh, you should have a bit of Scandinavia, but having Scandinavian doesn't really fit because the people who left there to settle in the Isles weren't really generally told by law there, go and conquer this for me. Okay, they, so were it's, go, it's, they were going out on their own. So it's setting the sides of the board, deciding, yeah. right, this is what we're going to deal with, it's going to be yeah. Britain and Ireland. And what's your role in all this? Um, well, my role is uh, influence manager, bringing people like yourself, you know, long-time uh, viewer of your channel. Uh, and I oh. thought this would be a great place for you to come and meet Jack more than anything. Meet, like. I meet wanted to Jack get you two the in the top, same top, room. Top of the tree! Yeah. yeah. In front of a really big sign. Yeah, I know. It's a difficult one to get in the shop, but it is definitely there. <laughs> it's very big. I'm sure you can't see it all. It is, it's, it's what, I don't know, 12 feet tall or something. This period, which I, I suppose it's, it's the, the later Dark Ages, you might say, it seems to be, um, you say it's enjoying something of Renaissance. The, the, the general movement seems to be saying they weren't so dark. It was really just more medieval times. And we actually know a fair bit about them, and they were more civilised than... Than, than people previously thought. Do you think that's fair? I do. I mean, because it's like, you see historians tend to avoid using the term Dark Ages anymore. Oh, it's about, very unfashionable yeah, now. It oh, shows it's ignorance. Early Middle Ages and stuff. Mm. I think it's certainly true, especially when you talk about Britain and Ireland in this period, because especially the period just before this, when insular art was at its key, like, Ireland was the major Christian centres of learning in the Western world. Like, mm -hmm. Especially going back to the post-Roman era, like that place, it produced a lot of saints who converted places and monasteries that produced great books, like the Books of Kells. It's a centre of great enlightenment and art. Mm -hmm. And whilst there's certainly lots of stuff where the history is questionable, like the written record isn't good enough to go more than, well, we think this happened. Yeah, maybe. Hengist and Horsa, were they really <laughs> called Stallion and Mare? Because that's what yeah. those names mean. Yes, two horse brothers doing stuff. I mean, we had to get a historian in for thrones to help out with uh, sort of northern Britain and Scotland because of the lack of annals from that era. Like, mm -hmm. Ireland, southern England, Wales, you've got annals well, from the time. The Picts, did they exist? Have you come down on one side or the other? I noticed well, you've got chaps up there with crossbows. Yes, based on uh, Pictish stones. Um, we aren't calling them Picts in this era because the kings shortly start calling themselves Kings of Arada rather than Kings mm -hmm. of Pictland. Gaelic seems to be the language of the nobility, so we've put them in the Gaelic kingdoms. Like, there's certainly interesting historical stuff going on with people going, were Picts a people or a political hegemony? And it's a question I don't want to <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Okay, like, fair enough. Very, very British. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, well, that, that can only be a good thing, right? Exactly. Oh, no, well, now my generals are... Oh, they're all... No, they don't like me. Oh, they're all... So rising up against if you are British, you might want to play this game because it's you know, the history of your own uh, isles. But what, if, what about foreigners? Do you think they would uh, get something out of this game that they wouldn't get from oh, other Total Wars? I, I, I suppose that. I don't see why not. I mean, most of the people in the world aren't French, but millions of people play Total War Napoleon. Well, because we all want the opportunity to, to beat to, up to, Napoleon. To kick Napoleon's ass, yes, this course. Yes, I should have, yeah. Uh, I did notice uh, in the in the presentation earlier the word berserkers came yes. up on the screen. <laughs> so there are in this in, in this game there are berserkers, are there? Can you have a unit of berserkers? Yes, they are a unit of berserkers. They are elite champion style warriors. Okay. They're very heavily armoured and right. well trained. So they and, are not. They're not. So they're well trained, well disciplined, coordinated units. They can get into of berserkers. A, they can get into a berserk state, but that's like they've just gone a bit. They get better melee stats. Like they're not going. You can't tell them to berserk. You can't say three, two, berserk. No, no. It's just like they get into battle and they're like, "We're just great fighters. We're going to go." And there's some really good Rah! sound effects. So it's like it's because obviously the mythological berserk is very exaggerated. Shirtless people going around going, "I am going to." Turning into bears. Yes, yeah. <laughs> actual legends. <laughs> I'm a bear now. <laughs> no, but it's trying to get across both the... Trying to get some feel of that legendary style of unit, but into something mm -hmm. more close to the reality of these are just really hard warriors who are going to be tough fighters. Okay, so they're nails warriors who are good at shouting. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so... I've seen your video on Berserk. <laughs> <laughs> You will ask a question about Berserk. I, I had to. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 would have, you, you, you knew I had to ask that. Some of the carved decorations survived as on this door on the spiral staircase, which went upwards to the right, as is the norm, but not the universal. I think they made this helmet design up. Oh, do I get to use that loo? Oh, stupid modern one. Top tip, just bend the fan of your pelline outwards, mount the cuisse on a post and add a light fitting, and voila! Medieval concealed lighting. Well, I played it for less than an hour, so my experience is limited. I can say that the maps and menus are very pretty, and they seem to have gone to a lot of effort with the campaign system, which keeps tracks of many marriages and alliances and who is heir to what. I met several people who said that they played it just as a campaign game and that they used the automatic system for fighting the battles for them. There are voice artists who talk in the usual everyday conversational style. Your mounted troops are swift and powerful, yet will suffer in prolonged engagements with infantry. Use them to harass and outflank the enemy. The battles are quite pretty too. The units are made up of nicely animated figures, all of identical height and build, with enough variation of looks to give the unit a bit of realistic variation, but not so much that units from a distance all look the same. Formed units seem to be able, as well as very willing, to move diagonally through each other in a strange way, and cavalry behave much as in earlier versions. They're just faster infantry who come to a halt and fight it out on the spot. I appreciate that portraying cavalry realistically is a lot more difficult than portraying infantry, but it would be great one day to see a game at least give it a go. My first battle, and I would like to say that I do admire the bravery of these men in their mean-looking black kit. I like that jumping up and down thing some of them do as they psych themselves up. Because, because my army did outnumber them a bit, but they gamely gave it a go. There they go! Come on, you brave lads! Well, I know that they're the enemy, but I'm British, so I have to cheer for the underdog. Oh, now they seem to have bypassed my men. How do I make my men attack them? Attack them! Attack them! Oh, this is such a display of incompetence. Look, don't look to me for instruction on how to play this game. I haven't a clue. I'm just clicking everything now. And then I won. Your victory is moments away. 
you're looking at a pre-release version of the game, and some things will get changed, such as the size of these enormous poppies and blades of grass. I did have a go at besieging a town, but they wouldn't let me have the footage, which was a shame because it was a hoot. Uh, I got my siege tower into position on the wall, and then all my men climbed down off it, and I spent the next ten minutes trying to persuade unit after unit to walk into the undefended town, but the AI artificial intelligence of the program made them prefer to fight their way past uh, hordes of determined defenders at the gate. Apparently they've fixed that bug. One nice thing about warfare in this period with this system is that they don't need to scale up the figures. Uh, the battles were so small then that one figure can represent one actual man on the field instead of the usual 20 or 60. You have near perfect command and control. Well, at least you do if you're far better than I am with computers. Something a real general, even today, would envy. You can whiz about the field with an aerial view and bellow into a unit commander's ear the exact vector of movement you want, and he just gets on with it. Wargamers and simulation fans might say boo to this, but it seems that most people prefer things this way and, uh, and don't like the frustration of units standing about doing nothing while their commanders dither or going off in the wrong direction because of an unfortunate misunderstanding over the use of a subordinate passive modal. The average player plays over hundreds of hours. Our games, they play them for hundreds and hundreds of hours, the average. Then it was time to get stuck into the rather good food, although the standard of period clothing was not high. A wooden plate and everything. We've got braised lamb, steak, and we've got fork, potted though. pork. We've got the uh, fork, that's, that's not very authentic, is it? Life's all I need. Right, I'm going to have a quaff. I've never had meat in my life. Oh, it smells really good. Don't tell me, it tastes like honey. Funny that. I wonder why. <laughs> it's actually very good. As they were packing up, they let in more light, and I got a better look at the double-height main banqueting room, its upper gallery just being a circuit of arrow slits. On the outside, one could see the rubble core of the walls and the scars left by various structures built up against the outside over the centuries, including some clear roof lines. What's this? Current weather rain and no flaming arrows? Oh. Wait a minute, they don't mean fire arrows, do they? Fire arrows! Fire arrows! Lindy 